Clash Royale. All those corruptors were kind of just wasted supply there. Yep, great splits, great uh, ghost usage, and uh, we'll send us into our fourth game of the night. TY coming back there in game number three uh, to uh, live to fight another day, or at least another time here out uh, uh, in SSL. Get your friends, tell them what's up. Game four starts right now. I love the fact that we get different uh, soundtracks for the different maps. Lemony well, needs to tell T.Y. Yeah. he can't cut his throat with his thumbnail. Yeah, you can't quite do that. This is Dark up in the top left, Zurich player. Uh, he show the same kind of uh, play that you showed uh, playing against T.Y. in the cross finals. Ah, there we go. Well, here is T.Y. of Blue Terran on the upper right-hand side of our largest map in the map pool, Frost. Uh, I don't quite know the exact translation of that, but he hopes that TY can move on to the next round. That's the, the meat of what that guy was saying. All right, uh, well, we'll see if he can. Uh, of course, this, uh, this series has been a very macro-focused series. We did have that maybe attempt by Dark to go for that uh, that Nidus uh, early Roach all in, but that got scouted, wasn't a thing. So it was forced to play a long game, couldn't last it out. So now we get into another huge macro map. See how well, uh, how well they go this time around. So yeah. stars for both players. They kind of lost it there towards the end, but once again, same exact builds going for uh, the uh, spawning pool and barracks first into expansions coming up. I'm not surprised Actually, well, I, I'm actually kind of well, no. Okay, this is what I want. Are to say. you or uh, aren't you surprised? I'm, I'm not surprised that Dark is uh, playing macro games against okay. Ty because even though that seems like a scary thing when you think about it, it's like well, Ty is one of the best multitaskers. He can really pick any kind of player, any race apart. But uh, Dark is confident in his macro play, but also Ty is one of the best. Uh, players against all ins. He is just so good at stopping them. Great defensive player. And I mean Darky tried it and you could see TY's response. Immediately Liberator's tanks, a bunker is made. He's already got units inside. He he was doing that before he even saw the Nidus and then he scanned it. He's like, oh okay, I know hundred percent. So I'm not surprised that Dark, you know, especially given the maps, he's like, no, I could just play a macro game against this guy. I can probably win most of them. I think there were small mistakes in that last game, but uh, I'm sure Dark is a smart enough player to go into this game, and if TY plays the same way, Dark is going to have an answer this time. Absolutely, and now uh, let's see what exactly is the play style. Is it mech or is it uh, bio with a starport coming up? This looks a lot like the build from game one. Uh, starting to get early Hellions out and then of course the armory behind it for the uh, the Hellbat transition. We aren't quite that far in the build, so still not telegraphed it's, just yet. It's looking like it though. That one barracks, it's, it's making another uh, tech lab right next to the starport. Lots of Hellion production. I, I think you've called this one rapid. I, I wouldn't be surprised, especially because TY knows that Dark is at horizontal spawns, so it's a lot closer than, say, cross spawns, and uh, can definitely get over there and try to make this build work. He's going to go for a Viking first. I don't believe he did this in game number one. No, this is definitely different, uh, and so the, the follow-up should be uh, you know switching that tech lab over to go for Banshee with Cloak, but we'll, we'll see if he wants to commit to that. This is a nice Viking just to uh, try to get some cheeky Overlord snipes out there on the map, but... Third base just now coming down for Dark. Means he's not really feeling too much pressure at this point, much like all the other games. Yeah, look at that. TY is, in fact, not going for the same build, just okay. putting out some pressure with the Hellions, uh, but is going to try to get some early tanks out. Is a, is a very safe kind of build with the tanks, of course, already making that wall. But you can put some pressure onto that third base as well if he wants to go for some kind of push here. First four Hellions out on the map, no armory in production, so it will not, in fact, be uh, the build we were discussing earlier. And also, without swapping that uh, starport over to the uh, tech lab, we will not be seeing any cloaked Banshee uh, shenanigans just yet. Uh, so it does look like this will be a little bit more of a standard build, just an interesting way of going about it. 
Four Hellions chilling out up there, waiting for their run buys. It's almost like he's waiting Coming for up. that fourth base. Uh, I think down. he's actually waiting for the dropship to come out and then tries to drop them inside the main base. Uh, we'll see if that is actually the play. Not going to work out if he decides. <laughs> look, at, look at this, a very defensive build once again from Dark. Lots of queens. And there we go. There Picking them all up. Picking them up and then dropping them down, much like the recipe for a uh, successful cast. I pick these up and I drop them down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put them down. Here we go, <laughs> coming in. We'll need to get at least one hit off and then we'll pick them back up. This is just going to be perpetual harassment that should be relatively difficult. Maybe stress a little bit of the multitasking for Dark. And uh, it's always nice to just put a little bit of pressure on uh, in the early game. Now, uh, <laughs> Two tanks, one medevac. That's the story of this drop coming in. <laughs> Trying to uh, re uh, reestablish some sort of a position out here. Just always nice to see the pressure out on the map. Well, second medevac now coming out. Trying to get a little bit of action down, but should be able to uh, put a little decent amount of pressure and make this difficult to clean up. Yeah, this is so annoying to deal with. Uh oh, the drones, they're all alone. Oh, he has to move them. Oh my god. The nice. huge hits here, all the drones are being sniped, oh 12, 13 God. go down. <laughs> oh man. You can't forget about those drones, man. They don't just magically stay safe when you pull them off the line. Big harassment there, and now actually uh, Terran up in the worker's apply. Now nice run by stops this fourth or third base, rather, from coming up. Will he stop this cancel? No, Ooh. forcing it out. So even though he sustains a lot of damage himself, he does a nice bit of damage there to TY as well. And TY's pressure is not done. He wants to continue Damn. here. He hasn't gone for any infantry upgrades just yet, but he does have a nice little ball of Marines to support the tanks and the Hellions here. TY's got to use those white raw tactics. You got to build your base and defense it. You got to yes. keep some stuff there to stop that cancel coming in. Now, uh, trying to push out and to stop this uh, Terran Wait, hold in the round. mid -base. Oh my god, so sick that bio is out of there. Actually, didn't even need to use that last little Bane lean to clear it all up. However, successful Liberator Harass in the main has denied mining there for now. Liberator cleared up, mining resumes, and things are looking good for Dark. Yeah, Dark's in a good place, not only because he defended that so well, but because the build that TY chose, once again, he's going to have so late of infantry upgrades that the next push is not going to hit for quite a while. So you can see Dark making two hatcheries. He's got a fourth base coming up oh, and a macro hatch. Cheeky Zergling stops those supply depots from being built momentarily. They'll continue. But like you said, yeah, late upgrades here for TY means he, uh, he'll be a little slow getting out of here. Oh, here comes the Queen Overlord. Got to pick up those tanks and get out of there. And that he does. At least he did see it. So this Unless is, that medevac gets sniped. This is the annoying overlord. It's going to drop creep, and this is going to be forward creep tumors just to make sure uh, that it's as difficult for TY to clear out as possible. That is quite annoying. I mean, it's especially at these positions, if they were cross spawns, Dark would have a harder time of spreading his creep everywhere. But when you just <laughs> make this one uh, kind of pathway, over to the Terran base, it's it's quite annoying to deal with as the Terran. Decent amount of harass early on, but it really did not accomplish what it was looking for. And now finally, TY loading something up to stop at these bases from just continuing to be oh, uh, spread across the map. And yes, so many creeps. So tumors. gross. <laughs> that is actually the so much thing. creep. And I mean, what what is TY going to do? The the queen drop is is just so smart, as you were pointing out. You can spread the creep forward, but it's also good for yeah. stopping the tanks in the middle of the map, which were actually there to stop any kind of creep and control the middle of the map. But once you take them out, you might as well do this. He's going to have creep all the way up to the front door of TY's base. He actually scans the creep to clear it out, and he's like, no, wait a second. That would actually take me so long to clear out. Uh, backing back away. Now, uh, there is a drop down at the lower uh, Zelnaga Watchtower that is going to oh, be loaded up back Here again. We go. They are links. So many hits, and eight SCVs do die. Saves two of the links. Those are going in the main. Meanwhile, uh, a drop that I was mentioning coming in here down to the uh, fourth base, it looks like. Could have gone to the fifth, but this actually should be cleaned up very easily. Yeah, lots of lings and banelings here. Baneling speed about to finish too, as well as plus two, plus two. Way, way ahead of TY. And again, it comes down to the build. I, I feel like TY just didn't do enough damage, and it got shut down so hard by Dark that Dark was just like, I'm going to make three hatcheries, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Okay, a decent push in here could actually deal with the fourth, and it will actually take it out, stemming the bio on in there, and that hatchery is down. 
Just look at how easy that was. Nice little Bayman's run by Bayman's rolling into in. the main, uncontested, right into the through the middle of the SCV line. I forgot the name of the workers there. <laughs> I just knew they were going to die. And now, I, I don't know how they just roll up there. Usually something there to defend, but not this time. For TY will be uh, dropping extensively out there on the map, but oh my god. Turnabout fair play, I guess. Fool me once, shame on me. Well, fool me twice and I run my Banelings into your drone line, which is actually SCVs. I just call all Something workers like that, drones yeah. now for some reason. I, <laughs> yeah, I had, I had no that as well. I, I was doing that for a bit as well, where everything was a probe, <laughs> because I used to play a lot of uh, a lot of Protoss in the past. Have switched to Terran, for those curious. But, uh, now, finally, we do see the, the cleanup crew coming on through. Lots of uh, tumors being cleaned up here. Yeah, man. Uh, Ty would make a great doctor at this point. Doctor? I was thinking janitor. Oh, no, no, no. He's going to clean out all the tumors. Oh, that's true. That makes more sense, actually. <laughs> uh, should be all cleared out, though, at this Ooh. point. Beautiful hits there. Oh, my God. That was actually such great Widow Mine uh, placement. Yeah. Actually did AoE damage to the... <laughs> Metavacs as well. They're all like on Oof. the same yellow health, but it's all good. You can see this small drop coming into the fifth base once again, but Dark is very ready. For Look at that snipe on the main link. Fortunately, it's it's not going to be enough as there's just way too much defense here for Dark. Uh, but it is at least going to put pressure onto him to force him uh, to do something other than just running into TY's very limited base. He's only on, I think, three at this point. Needs to get some more up there. He's the three base Terran now, just now taking that fourth uh, versus a Zerg that's just now taking his. Well, I guess he, he lost the base earlier, so that'd be five, six coming up. Finally, this will be cleaned up. The Widow Mine shot, not so good. Not quite enough. Dark lonely. doing very well at defending these drops. <laughs> Just blocking off the ramp there. Uh, Widowmine will not have another hit for a while, but decent uh, marine placement. Dishing out a lot of harassment. <laughs> poor, poor Baneling at the back. Can't quite make it all the way forward. And finally starting to clear up some of this huge creep highway. Now does not want to overextend here. Lots of great surrounds coming in. Great mine shots there, but able to pick up a lot and bring it back. Great splitting here, but lots of Queens and Banelings starting to roll in. TY, has he overextended? Well, he has taken a bit of damage here. The Queens, though, they do have to come up for the defense. And all the while, the reason why Dark is not just totally rolling this army is because he's getting all these upgrades, and he's going into Ultralis already as well. You can see Kainus plating as well as 3-3 way ahead Jeez. of the Terran. Not something that we used to see very often. And once again, it comes down to ghost timing. Are they going to be on time or late? TY needs to buy enough time to get those out, and he's starting to see the Ultras and know that that is tech he desperately needs. Yeah, I wonder when he's going to drop that down. I, I just checked. He does not have a Ghost Academy yet, so he can't go straight into production, but the Ultra is already out. Ultra versus Command Center. Planetary Fortresses tend to be pretty good against single Ultralisks. Uh, but uh, Kindness Plating, uh, completed along with 3-3, about to finish, is going to be way too much to deal with. And nice circling harass there at the side, and yeah, this, this also Oh, he's going to run into that planetary, and TY really struggling to defend here. Oh, he's not going to commit, it looks like. Oh, no, a bunch of links over there, no uh, repair, so the planetary actually goes down. Oh my god, uh, good liberator usage, but too many transfuses, and those... We'll all get cleared up for now. Stopping mining at the third and Ooh. no fourth means that even with this successful drop in the main and on the sixth base, uh, I don't think Dark is feeling it. not even mining from his third right now. There's there's production, but only because of the bank that he has. He's not mining all that much. As you were saying, these drops are very effective, but not quite as effective as that attack that Dark just put on. Yeah, Dark just doesn't even care. He's like, oh no, I lost the base. I am the Overmind, and I don't care. He's got ways to, uh, way too much. In fact, if you can, uh, if you can see the minerals per minute, uh, I don't think you even need that because you can just see it scrolling up on the map or uh, on the income tab. Just absolutely insane. All of these drops, effective but not effective enough. Yeah, looks like uh, another drop coming in here as Dark finally retakes the space. Yeah, I, I think TY is starting to come to terms with just being unable to break out, unable to really establish any more bases. He's finally got his fourth base up. 
it's his floated orbital from the main too. So he's he's really just struggling to uh, you know hold on to bases here. The liberators are actually doing a nice <laughs> bit of damage. One uh, spore. At least it's got less burrow time now. Oh, that is uh, that is actually correct. So will be easier to deal with these uh, liberators coming in. Uh, <laughs> the drone actually blocked it. And now the drones aren't being focused here. That liberator is going to go down. Liberator's got to kill off all those zerglings, Valdez. That's what they're there for. Uh, either way, I, this is certainly looking like a great place for Dark to be in. He's got a huge bank, tons of bases. Uh, might need to start expanding maybe a little bit more as his main and natural are mined out. I think third base might be close to being mined out as well. Uh, but starting to reestablish things like that uh, fourth and get, uh, get more bases up over the map. Uh, I don't know if that's really wanna, where you want to be building your base, TY, but trying to sneak a, an expansion down at the 5 o'clock. Hey, it's worked before. That's right, very true. Snuck a game from Zest in that exact fashion, and uh, well, not exactly like that. He did float to the island, and we well, also floated Zest to a land quite, base. Yeah, and uh, now finally gonna clean up some of these creep poopers out of the sky. <laughs> Doesn't want them out there. Okay, great defense there as well, and Dark really not really committing to a whole lot here. Uh, TY is starting to get a little bit of a foothold out there on the map. Nice drops coming in here as well to continue to dish out the harassment. Keep uh, keep Dark on the back foot. Uh, I think it's actually more like the, the rear forward foot because he's still on uh, in a great position. But TY with lots of great Ooh. harassment. Okay, <laughs> don't want to fly into so many queens. This is going to be an interesting game because, again, we do have the Spire coming out here from Dark. At least he didn't make two this time. And the Corruptor's coming out. We're going into another late game macro game, but this time TY and his harass is doing so, so much damage. Sniping so many important tech buildings specifically. Oh, so low and it goes down. Great pickoff there. Um, not sure exactly how well this uh, drop, uh, double drop over there, but oh man, Zergling run by. They will be able to get a few SCVs kills, but both harassments get cleaned up very effectively. Yes, very, very easily here. And look at this, he scouts the base. That was the one hope for TY to stick in this game. Oh, and instantly Zergling starting to be rallied down here. The entire mine of the Overmine channeled on that one lone base. Of course, another big push up here in the mid will need to be uh, cleared up as well. Lots of liberation zones will turn that around. Yeah, just barely, but you could see, like, <laughs> just nope. as you were saying, that creep being so far out is such a pain for TY. Great sieges and unsieges here from these Liberators. Uh, corruptors can't get in to clear them out because of the bio underneath. Yeah, very, very true. Dark is doing a good job of, you know, moving in, sniping one Liberator and moving out. But uh, definitely a strong push coming across the map here from TY. We have a hatchery being made in the face of this army, and here we go, the Corruptors coming in, and once the Corruptors are here, there's no way those Liberators are gonna survive, GG! GG, that is it! So far out on the map, Dark running him over, and that will be a third game for Dark to take the series 3-1 over TY. Kind of a rough spot for TY to face Dark in the round of eight, one of the hardest uh, opponents that you would have had to face here in the round of eight, perhaps outside of Zest, the the best one here, and really just just killing Ty in that series. There was one one game where it was very very close, and Dark just barely lost that one. But overall, I feel like Dark really just dominated that series from the get go. Uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, almost flawless play. Did have that one game that he did lose, but came back regrouped his thoughts and his armies and dealt with things uh, incredibly well. Um, I, I don't really know uh, what TY's comeback plan was there towards the end. That secret base got discovered.